find the planner that helps you, that brings you peace, that helps you organize. And if it doesn't, if it causes more stress and pressure, then pitch it. The question is this, do you use a homeschool planner? If so, how closely do you stick to it? Mm -hmm. I'm planning for the next school year and I don't want to plan too far ahead, but also want to start out the new school year strong and confident. If you do use a planner, which one? Ooh. Um, and yeah. And I'm going to let you jump on this first, but the only thing I want to say before you do is, yeah. and, and <laughs> if you've listened to us for any length of time, you'll know Abby and I homeschool very differently. So she different. is very structured. I am very much not super structured, but somehow we both get things done. Yeah. Um, however, this summer I I'm doing more planning um, than I've done in, in the past few years because Brooklyn's going into her senior yeah. year and I just really like we're working together um, to figure out like what are the last things that she really wants to accomplish this last year and not that that's the end of her schooling but like right. okay your last year what do you what I, I you know I've been talking with her and just yeah. we've both been praying about it and stuff and like what does she really want for this last year um, so we're doing that together and I know I actually, when I read this, I actually looked up some planners cause I was like, maybe I should oh. use a planner. <laughs> um, but as you're planning, hold your plans loosely. Yeah. I think that is so important because we tend to want to plan and then we want to grab hold so tightly uh, to yep. that plan. And then when it falls apart, we feel like we have failed some yes. somehow failed ourselves, for sure. failed our kids. And I've known many homeschool moms who have given up on homeschooling for this specific reason because they planned it out. It didn't, it didn't go according go. to plan. They felt like they messed it up and they let go of it altogether and said, this yep. homeschooling thing's not for me, especially those type A moms. Yeah. Um, so Abby type A. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Talk I would to say us this, about planners. I say the best planner, because she said the last question is what is the best planner? The best planner is the one that you're going to use. Um, oh, yeah. and that's, that's the answer because there's so many cool planners out there, but if you're not going to use it, it's a waste of your money. Yeah. Um, planners can cause stress because, you know, it tells you all the things you need to plan that you never thought you needed to plan that you don't need to plan. <laughs> so, you know, there's so many different kinds, you know, I've, I've had moms that go, we don't use a planner at all. What we do is at the end of the day, we write down what we got done. Mm -hmm. And I love that idea because then you don't have all these expectations. You just do what you can do. You know, yeah. there's loop planners, there's day by day lesson planners. And so I don't necessarily want to go into what's the best planner because there that's it's not different. that's not an answer you can give because the best planner for you is different than the best planner for me. For yeah. me, what I found is I would buy all these really cool planners and then I'd look at it and go, oh, I never thought I have to plan that. Like it would say, you know, like math, science, language art blah, blah blah and I was like I'm a box filler in her so I was like oh I didn't think I needed to plan art three times a week you know so I basically canned every store-bought planner there is and I make my own based on what I I don't want something I'm, I don't do good with empty boxes so mm -hmm. I'm like I'm only gonna put on our planner what we're actually doing and yeah. so it changes every year because last year looks different than this year and so for me I use a simple word document and I make some boxes and that's how I plan it. I'd never plan too far. I mean, and it works. Some people, they do the whole year. I've met those moms. They take a weekend, they get their file folders and they have the whole year planned. For me, that would put me over the top because I'm the type of personality yeah. that if I get quote unquote behind, I'm right. stressed. So I plan a week at a time, but I also know that God directs my week and I am not afraid to tear out that page and move it to next week, you know? Um, yeah. So use a planner that works for you, but don't feel like every box in the planner has to be filled out. I mean, I've right. seen some planners are like, what's for dinner tomorrow night? What, you know, what are your chores today? And that might help some moms and it might stress you out. So find the planner that helps you, that brings you peace, that helps you organize. And if it doesn't, if it causes more stress and pressure, then pitch it. Yeah. This was years ago. And I, when I say years, I mean, probably seven or eight years ago, I remember Sarah McKenzie talking on Read Aloud Revival about, um, I, I think if I get the story right, I apologize if I messed it up because it was a long time ago, but she talked about a lady at church, I think, who she was like, Sarah was like, I just don't know what I'm doing. I feel like things are kind of chaotic and I just don't know what direction to go all, you know, each day in mm -hmm. homeschooling, the lady was like, listen, get a spiral bound notebook and every night just write out what the next thing is. Yep. 
Yep. Um, and I still do that um, sometimes with my kids. I don't do it every night, but if we need to just kind of pull it back and focus right. on something, that's what I do. And I have, yep. I've made the spreadsheets with the pretty colors and printed them out and yep. made them, you know, laminated them, put them on the refrigerator to be used like three days. And yep. then that's it because life happens and yep. I can't stick to it. And then I realized after years of doing that, that I felt like I was failing all the time. And so I found that that worked best for me was to just get a spiral bound notebook, just write down, you know, here's, here's the next math lesson, you know, right. lesson 15, here's the next, you know, whatever we're going to do for history, watch this video or, right. you know, here, you could even put what games you want to play, you know, we're going to play totally. categories today, whatever. Um, but plan it out each day. And it sounds like that would take a lot of time, but I have found it doesn't. It takes right. way more energy to try to plan stuff at the beginning of the year for the whole year. Uh, I, yeah. Um, and I'm not I, saying that it doesn't work. Cause like to me, I just can't even imagine. I can't imagine that that would work. Yeah. But I do know for some people, if you're loose, if you're the kind of person that can look at that and go, eh, we can throw it out. Right. And that's what I think planning is you have to know your personality. I'm one of those people that if it's there, I can't just throw it out. Well, I'm right. learning. I've learned. I've learned to be that person. Some people are like, I can plan the whole year, but it doesn't yeah. control me. Right. Um, so I do think, but I think that it is good though. And I do want to say this, do know where you're going. You do need to know where yes. you're going. Because if you just do day by day, you might find that at the end of the year, you're like, we did nothing. Homeschool Insights is sponsored by CTC Math. If you're looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com and try it for free. For more great homeschool inspiration and resources, listen to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 